Hello, everybody. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the 14th Brahma Talks. We started in July 2020. My name is Leora Tech, and Brahma Talks is a monthly webinar um, organized by Brahma Grotska Teater NN about all things Jewish Lublin and all things about Brahma Grotska. So what is Brahma Grotska Teater NN, in case you're new? It is a municipal institution that is committed to preserving the memory of the Jews of Lublin. And those of you who have joined us before know that we've had a wide range of topics, and I think they've all been interesting. And we can always count on today's guest, Piotr Nazaruk, to, be, to bring us interesting information. Before I introduce him, I just want to remind people if you're joining us live on Click Meeting, you can use the chat, which may say public or chat, um, to tell us where you're viewing us from and things like that. And if you have a question, it's easier for us if you put it in the Q&A tab, because then we don't have to go looking through the chat for the questions. So now, without further ado, um, it's my pleasure to introduce you, Piotr Nazaru. Um, Piotr works at Brahma Grotska as an educator, researcher, and curator of temporary exhibits. And in 2017 and 2018, he received scholarships to study Yiddish at Evo in New York. And I know this is a very exciting thing because I did it this summer. <laughs> um, so um, our talk today is called Vienyava Rules the history and politics behind Jewish sports in Lublin. So Piotr, the obvious first question is, why sports? Why should this be interesting to us, especially those of us who don't normally care about sports? Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thank you so much, Liora. Hello. Um, and uh, uh, well, I, I would like to make a disclaimer of my own. Um, like it's it's sort of um, it's sort of a coming out actually because <laughs> frankly speaking I'm not a, a fan of sports uh, myself I can't say that I'm uh, interested in any discipline or uh, or in a sports movement like on intellectual level I understand that there are people who who are fascinated by by this topic and they know everything about sports I'm not such a person however. Uh, I am greatly interested in the role of sports, uh, especially Jewish sports, in um, in political, social, cultural, etc. Life in pre-war Poland, uh, especially in the interwar period, because <coughs> excuse me, because uh, in this period, um, like in 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 Poland and in 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 Poland in general, and and in Lublin sports was so like greatly linked with politics that I think, in my opinion, it was almost a uh, a branch of uh, politics. So even if you're not into sports, like if you if you're not a fan, you may find something interesting in this uh, in this subject. And second disclaimer because uh, the word uh, sports can mean many things, like you can fill many disciplines um, in, in, um, in this word. However, in terms of pre-war Lublin and pre-war Poland, it means mainly football or soccer if you're uh, in the United States. So, of course, other disciplines, um, uh, other sports were also quite popular among Jews and non-Jews in pre-war Poland. However, soccer was the most, and till today is actually in most countries in Europe, is the most popular sports. Um, and that's why it was, um, uh, uh, that's why in most cases I will um, uh, talk about uh, football teams, soccer teams um, during our today's uh, meeting. And actually, I would like to say, I, I would like to show you an evidence um, that soccer was in fact the most popular 
um, sports and pre-war looping. This is, <clears throat> it may look boring, but it is a um, budget, uh, like a budgetary report of a, a sports club, a Jewish sports club, Hakoach, that existed in, in Lublin. It was one of the biggest uh, sports clubs in, um, in Lublin. So it's from 1931. The budget, yearly budget of this of this club of this association was four four thousand seven hundred eighty five uh, zlotys fifty six groshes, and in terms of spending, like like this this Hakoach this um, this club was spending almost two thousand zlotys for its football or soccer team, um, athletics. 121 zlotys tennis 36 zlotys gymnastic uh, gymnastics 62 zlotys boxing four zlotys 60 groshes so you can see the disproportion 2000 zlotys yearly was spent on football team and well the rest was just um, uh, an addition um, to the uh, you know, to the activity of this sports club. So that's why, that's why sports. Okay, I'm curious though, because you said that sports was linked to politics. Was that unique to the Jewish sports, you know, environment or was that also true of the um, <clears throat> Well, in, um, in the inter interwar Poland, um, sports was in general linked with politics and ideologies. However, um, Jewish sports or Jewish sports movement was, I think, even more uh, linked with politics than non-Jewish sports. And the reason was that um, the Jewish identity was still something in a process of creation, like um, the fierce questions about what about the interpretation of Jewishness, about the interpretation of um, a Jewish identity and the direction the Jews should take, um, was still was much um, like these debates, these uh, tensions were were much um, much stronger and much more fierce than among, for example, Poles, like non-Jewish non-Jewish Poles, who of course also had like some differences and and their sports clubs were also affiliated with various political um bodies or political parties but the polish identity itself was like well established in terms of jewish life it was something still to be determined like um there were tensions between uh between various ideological or political um currents and uh, like in one of our previous um, Brahma talks about Peretz House, we like we discussed in details the changes of Jewish identity. Like we we talked about the triumph of um, of Hasidism in the nineteenth century. We talked about um, the opposition against Hasidism, mainly the Haskalah, the Enlightenment, the Jewish Enlightenment. Uh, movement um, and its followers, the Maskilim, uh, who uh, absorbed many um, European um, advances in sciences, philosophy, uh, etc. We also talked about assimilation, um, which was a uh, also like like uh, like the Haskalah, not a movement that was strong in numbers, however, very influential and. Um, it gave a, a birth to many like influential figures, like for example in Lublin, Franciszka Arnsteinowa, who was a poet and a uh, independence activist. Uh, finally, we spoke about we talked about um, Zionism and how it changed um, the Jewish street, the Jewish world, and finally about leftist Jewish leftist movements. Uh, and their developments like Peretz House, etc. So there were many different ideologies, many different polit political currents that were fighting with each other or 
Well, yeah, I, I think we can use the word fighting um, over the uh, interpretation of Jewishness and the direction the Jews should take. Uh, so that's why this sports and all of them uh, were employing sports for their purposes. So that's why this uh, world of Jewish sports club was, sports clubs or association was extremely diverse and uh, um, and why I find it um, interesting, more interesting than the Jewish uh, than than the sports uh, world of non-Jewish population of pre-war Lubin. So that's my long answer to your uh, to your question. And even within some of those, there were further divisions, right? Because you had different kinds of Zionists, for example. Yes, yes. Um, like, <clears throat> and and uh, and not only um, there were divisions, but also there were fierce disputes between um, these uh, visions, variants of Zionism or leftist uh, leftist um, um, movements much more fierce than uh, between uh, Zionism, Zionist clubs and uh, non-Zionist clubs, for example. Um, in a few minutes, I will, uh, I will show you and tell you in details uh, about um, various sports clubs that existed in, um, in, in Lublin. Um, let me just um, mention mm -hmm. to the audience that that this presentation or um, talk is based on an exhibit that you created, which um, right now is an online exhibition, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think Agata will put a link to it in the chat, but like there are so many materials that you found. I don't know if you want to tell us now or later, but like definitely at some point, let us know how you went about you know, finding these materials. Well, maybe maybe it's uh, um, maybe it's wise to tell you something um, uh, because uh, uh, I think that uh, I was able to reconstruct the history of Jewish sports in Lublin quite well. However, it's still a reconstruction. Like there is still um, some room to further further research and. The the reason is the reason is that we don't actually have like a lot of sources, a lot of documents created by sports clubs in Lublin. Most of the original documents uh, were destroyed during the Second World War. So um, to reconstruct uh, this this history. Um, I had to compare various uh, various sources, often quite contradictory, and uh, and and I had to find like the most rational explanation for some uh, details that were contradictory. Uh, although we don't have original like archives of um, uh, sports clubs from Lublin, um, Jewish sports clubs from Lublin, we have a few very fine articles published in Lublin um, Yisker book, Lublin memorial book, or actually books, the Yiddish version and, and the Hebrew version uh, have, um, bo the both versions have articles about sports. Uh, I think there are six or seven such articles or essays about pre-war sports in Lublin created, penned by, um, pre-war activists or sportsmen or athletes from Lublin. We have some similar essays in Kol Lublin, uh, the uh, annual um, magazine um, issued by uh, Lublin Landsmannschaft, Lublin Association in Israel. We have some info uh, scattered in testimonies that were uh, recorded after the war by the Historical Jewish Commission. Most of them are today are in uh, in the Jewish Historical Institute in Warsaw. So it's also uh, uh, a fine um, source. Like here, for example, you can see 
uh, it's a um, it's a testimony by um, like I don't remember the name of this person. His surname was Reichenstein, the Yiddish sport Bewegung in Farmilchomedik in Lublin. So Jewish um, sports movement in pre-war Lublin. Uh, finally, we have a lot of posters advertising like games um, in pre-war Lublin, and it is also a valuable source in in uh, reconstructing this history. We have uh, articles in press, finally, in pre-war Yiddish and Polish press um, about um, sports movement. However, still, I I, uh, I think that this, this story is incom incomplete and there's probably room, for sure there is still room, for further research. However, uh, for years, this, this topic was somehow neglected, I think, by historians. So that's why it was, uh, well, it was needed to, to make this research, to go through testimonies, essays about sports, um, et cetera, and reconstruct it. Thank you for doing it, Pieter. <laughs> it's an important thing. Um, maybe you can tell us, you, 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 you talked a little bit about that ideological landscape. I don't know if you want to. Yes. Uh, yeah. And uh, also, like, did sports, did this, is this only an interwar phenomenon or like, was, did it exist in the 19th century or? No, it is a, it is a uh, interwar period phenomenon. Like actually, uh, Jewish sports movement, um, its history, its modern history starts with Zionism. In 18, oh, it's it's the 19th century, but very late uh, 19th century. In 1899, Max Nordau, who was the one of the main ideologists of um, early Zionism, um, coined this this um, phrase uh, "Muskel Judentum." In German, it means muscular Judaism or muscular Jewry. So he um, claimed that um, uh, Jews have to uh, counter the image of themselves as being weak and defenseless. And he called for establishing Jewish sports clubs. Um, so they, you know, in order to shape both um, bodies of young um, Jews, but also their minds to um, to shape their worldview as proud members of the Jewish nation. So Jewish sports actually begins with with uh, Zionism. Later, it was used uh, or employed by all um, Jewish ideologies uh, because it was one of the best ways to promote your either ideology or your worldview or your, uh, your interpretation of Jewishness among the youth, uh, among young people who were, um, who were eager to join such, um, uh, such, such associations and such uh, sports clubs. And uh, I think that, um, like sports itself was actually a secondary uh, purpose of the existence of Jewish sports clubs. Like in Lublin, uh, we had 10 or so um, very different um, Jewish sports associations, but their sports achievements, like real achievements in the field of sports were at least, well, were not like extremely were mediocre i would say they were mediocre however their uh first and main purpose was either to promote hebrew language among um its members or uh, or fans or to promote the yiddish language among them um or to promote culture based on these languages um, therefore, the, they organized, for example, a lot of um, cultural events. Uh, later, I will show you um, 
many like adverts, uh, advertisement of such uh, such cultural um, events. Um, you know, if, were they literally using these different languages like on the field? Like yes. some teams were shouting to each other in Hebrew and others in Yiddish and others in Polish or? Uh, yes, like uh, the, the very first sports club, Jewish sports club in Lublin was called Shimshon, which means Sam Samson, right? Um, and actually, um, it was established in 1917, so under uh, under Austrian Austrian Hungarian occupation during the First World War. And in the field, they were using Hebrew expressions like, you know, go, uh, jump, etc. So they were not only promoting like physical education among boys mainly, because back then girls were not um, welcome, I think, yet. Like, you anticipated another question for, uh, that you can ask later uh, about girls. So, yeah. so they were promoting uh, at least, uh, well, maybe not Hebrew grammar, but at least Hebrew vocabulary among uh, among its, um, its members. Cool. Um, okay, so back to the different... Um, you know, the different clubs. I was interested that when you showed that document from Hakoach, because I thought it would just be, okay, this is the Hakoach soccer team or something, but it's this whole organization that's Hakoach and they have all these different things under their auspices. So was that the case with all the teams that it was like an organization? Yes. Mm, there were a few like, um, unofficial, unregistered um, football teams or soccer teams in Lublin, like um, teams with their um, names, but without any connection with, um, without, that were not um, institution, institutionalized. However, I think actually the Polish government um, was forcing um, the clubs to you know register to have such a structure because it was easier to control um what was going on in um, um in such uh, associations but also it was easier probably much easier to like collect money um you know to to take part in official games etc so uh most uh teams were interested in um, in becoming such um, institutionalized organizations, you know, they were interested in having their own, um, like like a room where they could, um, uh, where it was possible to meet to organize cultural events, dancings, etc., etc. Um, so yes, uh, we have like we have spendings for uh, various disciplines, but we also have. Um, like um, spendings for uh, their uh, local um, and other uh, other costs of their um, work. Okay, I see you have um, other uh, visuals, so I don't want to prevent you from showing what you want to show. By okay, uh, I would like to show you. Um, uh, yes, Tzvika Rubin uh, says that Nesher was an official. Um, an unofficial football club and later it of course became um Hapoel but uh, there were others like Isahar for example was also an official uh, unofficial uh, team Gibor there was such a such a team also uh but here uh, maybe actually Agata can send you a link to this uh, infographics because I'm not sure whether you can see um everything clearly this is a timeline showing um race, the birth and um, demise of various um, <laughs> uh, Jewish political, uh, Jewish uh, sports clubs that existed in Lublin throughout the entire interwar period. Um, and to make sense of it, I would say that there were like um, two or three main blocks of, of these um, uh, clubs. The first and the most, the, the strongest was a block or, or a group of clubs that were affiliated with um, 
Zionism, with with um, um, with Zionist organization. The first that uh, that was established in 1917 was Shimshon. Later, it was um, closed um, by the authorities. However, some of its members joined another club, which was called Shomria. It was also a club with with uh, Zionist affiliations. Maccabi was also a huge um, uh, club that was that was in the orbit of Zionism. Maccabi later changed its name into Hakoach, and then in the late 1930s, uh, it again changed its name to um, to Maccabi. So and and Shomria and Yardenia joined. Maccabi at some point. So as you can see, they were joining each other. New clubs, new clubs were were forming. Some were closing down. However, it was a block of of, of teams that were like clearly um, affiliated with Zionist organization, and their purpose was not only to play football or to uh, participate in some some other games, but also to um promote the proudness of um, uh, um, of being a, a member of a Jewish uh, uh, nation and other um, issues that were important for um, uh, Zionists. The second block uh, of, of, of Jewish sports clubs in in Lublin was a was a block of labor um, labor as, associations. Um, two of them were actually labor Zionist clubs, um, the previously mentioned Hapoel, which was the most successful, I think, um, Jewish sports club in, in Lublin. Um, Stern was also a labor Zionist club. The two clubs were, um, associated with Poaletion right and left respected, uh, respectively. Uh, quite important political parties, but they there there was also a labor but non-Zionist um, um, sports association in Lublin um, that was affiliated with the Bund. Its name was Morgenstern. Um, the communist uh, party did try to establish uh, like its influence in the. Sp- sports movement in Lublin. However, it failed. Like um, they tried to open Jewish sports club in Kalinowszczyzna and Jewish sports club start. However, um, the both teams were uh, were not allowed to uh, um, to be established under the accusation, at least, of uh, propagating, promoting the communist um, ideology. And well, the third, like the tiniest group of sports clubs that existed in Lublin was, uh, was a tiny little um, group of non-partisan uh, clubs, mainly Vienyava, which is the hero of our exhibit and, um, um, and of our event. And also there was a small, there was a small um club that was um it was Jewish academic sports club so it was it was also uh more or less non-partisan um yeah so there were three main blocks two of them the most important um the the, the group of uh, zionist clubs and um and labor ones did these clubs were these only for adults and if yes, or maybe even not, if yes, do they have corresponding youth movements, all of them? Uh, they were not only for adults. I would say that most of them were actually for teenagers or um, young adults. And mm-hmm. most of them had uh, like a few um, um, teams, like for example, Hapoel had team one, which was probably the best, team two, which was... Um, um also probably fine but not not, like, <laughs> not uh, you're very as, diplomatic <laughs> well i don't want to uh, um, uh yeah i am diplomatic uh so so um 
so because um, uh, you asked about youth movements of political parties, right? Like, uh, like were were youth movement? Was it sort of like? I was just wondering if they competed. Like, oh, this kid is like, should I go to the sports club or should I go to the youth movement? Or did were they kind of? Uh, well, know, it depends. Like, um, like for example. Hapoel and Stern were basically youth movements of uh, uh, of polity on uh, right and left. Morgenstern was basically a youth movement of the Bund. However, the Bund, of course, had uh, also other youth movements like Zukunft and Skiff for kids. Um, so, so it was a constellation of organizations that were rotating, uh, right? Like like uh, like planets around sun, um, the sun was the political party, and around there were different organizations, sports movement, sports clubs, um, other youth movements um, or youth organizations, uh, etc. Um, and what I know, you have some information about, um, you know, family members of Lubliners. Yes, I'm actually quite uh, quite excited. Um, well, maybe um, because maybe I will give you an overview um, of uh, all of the clubs that existed in Lublin, and when it comes to um, uh, mentioning uh, family members of our uh, Lubliners community, I will just mention it. Um, so uh, a few minutes ago, I I told you a few things about Shimshon. Uh, so Shimshon was the very first, um, um, the very the very first sport Jewish sports club that that uh, existed in Lublin. As you can see, uh, the photo on the left is splendid. They are holding like a huge, um, I don't know how to call this object, um, like a um, well, it's it's their badge or something like that, like uh -huh. like their coat of arms with. Um, the name of the uh, uh, of the club, uh, Shimshon was actually. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, most kids who were members of this uh, this club were uh, from middle class families. Um, they were not. Um, they were not recruiting uh, them from like you know kids from Podzamcze district, like the poor Jewish ghetto poor jewish district around the castle sheroka street etc they were from wealthy um industrialist families uh so when they were practicing like many of you who visited lublin probably know the place called tarasy zamkowe like it's a huge mall like located near um uh, near uh, the grotska gate and amphitheater center um, in this, in that place, there used to be a huge field, field, like field, um, and the Shimshonists used to um, uh, practice there. So they had to, you know, um, go through this uh, neglected, poor neighborhood of the old town and Podzamcze uh, district. And according to um, testimonies and, and, and sources. It was like a, um, it, for them it was shocking. They were all Jewish, but for them it was shocking to see this um, uh, this, this, this poor ghetto around, uh, around the castle. So uh, most of them were probably quite like assimilated into the Polish language and uh, uh, like culturally uh, much closer to their Polish neighbors from fancy neighborhoods in Lublin than to their um, to other Jews from uh, from Podzamcze um, district. Uh, the next uh, the next slide um, Jewish Sports and Gymnastic Association Maccabi and actually Rachel Steckler um, wrote something I uh, I was just about to mention uh, <coughs> I'm sorry her grandfather I'm, I'm, it's amazing that Rachel is with us. Her grandfather, uh, Isaac Korenbleet, was a member of uh, Maccabi. 
Maccabi was the longest existing sports association in Jewish sports association in Lublin. Like it, it was established in 1919. Uh, so together with uh, the year when when Poland regained its independence, and it, it existed till 1939. So it had a very long history. Um, um, it was, as I mentioned, a um, a club that was affiliated with with the Zionist movement, um, and its history was uh, quite complex because its main rival for many years was the club uh, known as Shomria. Shomria, like this club, was somehow associated with Hashomer Hatzair movement. So Shomria, from what I understand, means like watch. Like, you know, you can stand on watch. Um, so Maccabi and Shomria, which changed its name to Yardenia at some point, like this is this is crazy, um, were main rivals. They were competing with, with each other and the, both of them were Zionist clubs, like, um, and, and they were the main rivals. But at some point they uh, decided to unite they actually united and created um, uh, Hakoach, um, uh, which existed till uh, till uh, 1937, and then again changed its name to um, uh, Maccabi. Uh, these are also um, uh, footballers or soccer players from uh, Shomria or Yardenia. <sighs> Players of the Hakoach um, uh, club that was created uh, like as a result of a union between Maccabi and uh, Shomria or um, Yardenia. Piotr, do we have lists of the players for each team? Or? No, 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 because we don't have original documents. Um, we have just uh, we have only like we know a few names uh, from from the press from articles in the press like the press used to like the editors used to say that for example this player was good during today's match uh, but we don't have like list of members unfortunately uh, but uh, here like. Here we have uh, players of um, Hapoel, which was a labor Zionist uh, affiliated club. And here we know, for example, that the boy um, in the upper row in the middle is um, Isaac Koren, uh, is, <laughs> sorry, is, is Arie Rubin, uh, the father of, um, of Tzvika Rubin, who's also with us. So like if we know um some names often we know them because of uh testimonies of family members and and their um and because they 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 share their knowledge with with us so Tzvika's father and rachel's grandfather could have played against each other i hope so <laughs> uh um like I can I can just go through and and show you this this material because it's interesting like like visually uh, this is this is uh, this is for example a ID card of Hapoel uh, which is which is a very interesting uh, find um, we we mentioned that most of sports clubs in in um, in Lublin in Poland in general used to organize various events that were not uh, that were like um mm, like cultural events for example dancing or lectures on various topics so here for example we have uh, an announcement of uh, of a, a representants dancing organized by um by uh, by Hapoel in the 1930s uh, here, even more announcements by um, by the um, uh, by Stern, which was affiliated with 
uh, uh, with Poalition left. So some dancing, some uh, some balls, etc. Uh, simple, but also interesting in terms of uh, how they look like. Um, Morgenstern, Workers Physical Education Association, Morgenstern. Morgenstern was quite unique. Uh, like it had, as you can see, it had a soccer team. However, it was much more focused on, um, well, physical education. And here, like I think, I think Judith Mayer is also with us um, today. And we actually have a beautiful photo of girls and boys from Morgenstern. And Judith's mother is also in the photo. If I'm not mistaken, like Judith maybe can uh, can tell us, but I think it's the, the blonde girl in the second row from, um, from the ground. So she's third from right. And it's the first time we see girls, as, as I hope you, uh, you've noticed. Um, <laughs> Morgenstern um, was a Bund affiliated um, club and um, it was unique in terms of uh, their like equal um, well, equal status of boys and girls in, in, in Morgenstern. I haven't seen many uh, evidences of girls um sports activities in in other like in materials regarding other sports clubs here um we have actually we have more like this is a photo from our famous glass negatives collection from uh rena for it's a different topic but uh, a wonderful photo of girls with their uh coach uh his name was david rosenwein it's a it's an interesting story. Um, please notice their beautiful uniforms with hearts um, on t-shirts. And as you can see, they were unisex uniforms. Here, boys also were, well, almost the same uh, uniforms. So, so Morgenstern, which means dawn, by the way, in, uh, in Yiddish was quite unique um, because girls were like, well, represented in this uh, in this association and well the last but not least Vinyava. Vinyava was a unique um, Jewish sports club in Lublin that was non-partisan it was not affiliated with any uh, political party Vinyava as maybe many of you know, is a district, like today, it's a district located in the very, almost in the very city center for hundreds of years. It was a separate shtetl that existed near Lublin, the famous Hasidic Tzadik, Hachozemi Lublin, um, the seer of Lublin, um, lived in Vinyava for a couple of years before he moved to Lublin. Later, Vinyava was incorporated into Lublin, but uh, like uh, it remained uh, culturally uh, a bit unique. And uh, boys from Vinyava, well, it was the youngest sports club um, in, in Lublin, but they, um, they had many, like they won, um, they, their sports success, success, successes were uh, quite significant. They were able to won um like like they were in the top tier of lublin um, um province league but they were also unique due to the fact that in 1935 they accepted into their ranks a few non-jewish polish players which was like i can't find any uh i i i it, it was it's it's a unique um thing like i can't think of any similar situation when poles joined a jewish sports club like it was a very unique situation and i find it fascinating like um 
uh, I consider it the most interesting uh, thing in sports in Lublin in general, Jewish and non-Jewish, because it was something, um, um, it was a try in my, in my uh, opinion, an attempt to break this division between non-Jewish clubs, Jewish clubs, like um, the Vinyava members did something, maybe unintentionally, who knows, but they did something, uh, something quite amazing. And even though the, the uh, Polish players left Vinyava after just a year or two, uh, it is an amazing episode in the history of uh, Lublin sports, I think. Did Jewish players ever join non-Jewish teams? Yes, it was more, <clears throat> um, well, maybe not teams, like rep representations. Like, for example, uh, when we had a um, uh, local league, Lublin uh, Voivodeship League, um, representation of Lublin was, for example, uh, taking, uh, was playing um, games. So the best players from various um uh, clubs were joining the representation team however it was something different like it was something um, mm, mm, they were not team members they were just um, best players from each um, mm, club selected to play in um, regional games did you find any evidence of the reasons why these non-jews wanted to join Yenyanga? um frankly i'm not sure why like um because you know from today's perspective it may seem uh well it's a normal thing like we have we have uh players from different countries in our uh sports clubs in in poland and in other places like it's it's normal thing that the teams are uh the teams have good players from all, all around the world but we are talking about interwar lublin a place um like you know the main street of lublin krakowskie przedmieście was basically divided by a like an invisible psychological line that was dividing the street uh for two parts like the jewish part and the polish part um the the scale of uh, um, uh, the scale of like separation, especially in the late 1930s, when the situation like the Polish government was like shifting into more nationalistic politics, the atmosphere was not not very um, like consolidating. Like it, they were rather creating. Uh, borders between um, non-Jewish Poles and, and, and Jewish Poles. And yet, in 1939, a few players joined, non-Jewish players joined uh, Vienyava, a Jewish a Jewish sports club. So I don't, I don't know the reason. Maybe the reason was that um, they were trying to do something different. Like, maybe they were trying to break this chain of... Uh, racial differences discrimination etc that was not producing anything of value it was only producing you know like hatred and, and, and so on so is this the reason that you decided to center the exhibit yes because i find it a great humanistic achievement that is much greater and much more important than um than achievements, uh, than sports achievements, like in the like cups and, and the goals, etc., uh, and the most interesting episode in the history of Lublin sports. Yeah, well, it would be cool if, to find out. Maybe in your further research, you'll be able to find out more. About I hope so. I hope so. Um, I want to encourage people to, you know ask questions in the Q&A tab. There, there are a couple of comments here, Piotr, like um, 
Vika Rubin says Hapoel also had women's sports. Mm -hmm. um, and then somebody else asked, it was after I had already asked about the 19th century, so I think maybe she wanted further, some further information about um, what was the status of Polish organized sports during the 19th century. Is there any more than what you already said? Or Well, in, in the 19th century, um, um, well, probably some sports associations existed, like Polish, 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 non-Jewish, Polish sports associations existed. I don't know like the details, but I, I have a feeling that uh, like sports in general, like um, erupted, like this sports movement erupted in the in the twentieth century century. Like before, of course, the people were probably. Um, and there were some more or less professional sportsmen in the 19th century, but um, professional sports, I think, was invented in the 20th century. Like, I, I don't know whether there were some, uh, like, uh, huge games in the 19th century, like Olympics, you know, such uh, multinational uh, sports events. This is something uh, that I think was invented and developed in the 20th century, especially after the uh, after the First World War. Um, you mentioned uh, when you were first talking about like the the landscape kind of of Jewish Lublin. You mentioned some religious groups. So, to what extent did any religious um, groups participate in sports? Well, in theory, like I think it's. It, the situation is not so different today, like among the Hasidic community. In theory, they they were not interested in um, in in sports. However, uh, as usual, theory and practice uh, do not follow each other paths. So I remember reading um, about Vinyava actually. Vinyava, since it was a very successful. Um, um, uh, club and uh, and Vinyava was a district that was um, dominated by uh, by the Jewish population. Many of them were actually were still uh, Hasidic and, and quite Orthodox. However, even they, according to Lubliner Tugblad, which was the main Yiddish uh, daily uh, in Lublin, even even the the, the Hasids were uh, like fiercely excited by games in which Vinyava participated. Uh, however, of course, there was no a like a uh, like a religious Orthodox Hasidic sports club uh, in um, in pre-war Lublin. Aguda was the was the main like religious political party. Um, and though uh, other political parties had um, ties with with sports, Aguda didn't, I think. Um, so in theory, uh, they were not interested in sports. However, uh, actually they were the same situation with the theater. Like it, well, the Hasids do not praise theater as something of value. However, in terms of pre-war Lublin, actually many of them were, uh, interested in, 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 in Yiddish the theater. Was there were there ever anti-Semitic in incidents against the Jewish team? Uh, well, for example, the Polish players of Vienyawa, uh, or non-Jewish players of Vienyawa, according to testimonies, were uh, left Vienyawa because of like anti-Semitic um, environment that was like forcing them to leave this this club. Um, the, there was like, and this is tricky, like. For sure, there was some sort of violence between um, uh, Jewish and non-Jewish fans of uh, football. However, it is hard to say whether it was like whether its motive was motive was uh, anti-Semitism or just fierce uh, emotion emotions. Um, um, 
Yeah, normal sports hooliganism. Yes. Um, so mm, it, it's a tricky question, I would say, um, in terms of sports. So to finish up, um, what, you know, what more would you like to find out? Like, where does this research go? Like, what, how can we find out more, you know, promote the research? That's well, for sure, there is still much to be done. Like, for sure, there are, um, like, today, I, I don't have it with me, but uh, uh, even today, I found a, um, like, I, uh, I showed you the ID card of Hapoel, but I, I, I also located an ID of Morgenstern, uh, in a somewhere in Israel, in a uh, I think Masuach, uh, there's such a um, institution in Israel. So for sure, there are some interesting objects, interesting like uh, press articles that uh, that can be translated. Um, it would be great actually to to turn this virtual exhibit into a real um, traditional exhibit. Who knows? Maybe one day it will be also possible to publish something about uh, Jewish sports in, in Lublin. This, this topic is, uh, is fascinating. And even though like, we don't have the original documents, uh, uh, most players of uh, teams in Lublin died during the, or were killed during the war, we have a lot. Like, even though so much was, was lost, still we have a lot of photos we have a lot of posters we have a lot of material so there is enough to um to fill a book yeah at least. well i encourage everybody i think i got to put the link to the exhibit um in the chat and there's also i so I encourage everybody to um check it out on your own and there's also a really interesting article um that Piotr wrote about Jewish sports. So you can look at that too. Um, so thank you thank so you much, much. Piotr. I really appreciate it. Thank you so it. much. Um, it was fascinating as usual. And um, thank you to the audience for being here, whether you're watching us now live or um, whether you're watching on, on YouTube. Um, okay, I see you've got some, some you know, kudos in the chat. Um, and our next, uh, oh, and thank you to Agata, as always, who's doing everything behind the scenes. Um, the next Brahma Talks will be on Thursday, October 21st at two o'clock. And members of the education team are going to tell us all about this project. It's a really big project. Full disclosure, I'm, I'm part of it, but never mind. Um, <laughs> that they've been working on for a year, and it's it's a web documentary, and it's about Polish Jewish German dialogue. So they've interviewed a lot of people, and the web documentary includes many different elements. So there's film, there's storytelling, there there are still photos, there are lesson plans. I don't know really all the details about it, but I know it's going to be really interesting. So I encourage everyone to join us. And um, if you haven't signed up for the newsletter, please do, because that's how we're giving news to our English speaking um, friends about things going on in Brahma Grotska, including Brahma Talks. So thanks to everyone and see you next time. Oh, I, I see Michelle Berman is with us. Michelle is, uh, is a friend of mine from New York. So oh. thank you, Michelle. <laughs> Great, shout out to all the friends. Okay, see you next time. See you next time.